Entrevistamos a Gary Stutt, investigador de la NASA, para lograr cultivos en ambientes extremos como la Luna o Marte, quien estuvo presente en el pasado Congreso Inversolar. Tras conocer los invernaderos a partir de las afamadas fotografías de satélite, Stutt se ha adentrado en varios invernaderos solares de Almería. Estas han sido sus impresiones. So, so, so when I'm in the greenhouse, I, I, I'm incredibly impressed at the at the productivity and that the 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 lights coming in, that the a very appropriate use of the resources here are being applied to in 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 such an effective manner. So this broad expanse that you see from space is really a much more concentrated area than I had imagined. It is much more productive than I than I had imagined. So it is this this first taste is very very much a, an eye opening experience for me. I, I absolutely think that the greenhouses are part of the answer for feeding the populations that are coming. The greenhouses enable productivity well beyond anything that is in the field. It allows the extension of the season and it allows an optimization of the environment outside of its normal zone. So absolutely it is essential part of that solution. So, so specifically for, for this yeah, Amiria model, I, I'm seeing controls of sensors to optimize the water, especially to, to plant needs. I'm seeing you know, the possibilities Of, of light sensors to optimize when shading is put on and, and when it's taken off. Perhaps the, the control uh, of ventilation to optimize CO2 control within, within those greenhouses. As the demand goes up for, for crops and food, intermittent lighting in between to either control pest, to attract pest, or to increase productivity all up and down the vines uh, of the plants. All are possibilities for the future. So, so the bacteria that within the soil will form a symbiosis or mutualisms. So the selective bacteria have the possibilities of increasing the resistance of the plant to stress by improving the uptake of nutrients from that available soil. They are also have the the continuous action on the, on the soil to improve it by increasing the organic material. And depending upon those organisms, the production of beneficial, what we'd call biostimulants, that would increase the growth and, and size and the vigor of that plant. Those have real potential in what's called the rhizosphere, but ultimately that micro plant root interactions. And perhaps even as we go up onto the fruit of providing those, you know, those bacteria are beneficial against the, the infection by pathogenic. A a absolutely, that, that the, the development of technologies to grow in very harsh and strange and unfamiliar environments have direct application to harsh and unfamiliar environments where we try and grow plants. And where we have successfully done that, such as you, what you're doing here, here in Almeria, we have the potential to apply those technologies to make those processes better. So, so what has really struck me and is, and is altering my, my, my thinking has been on the bacterial side The, the idea that we are having a, a diversity of bacteria in the roots to in, improve the growth. Within the greenhouses, the movement to increase the biodiversity of the plants inside the greenhouse to, not, to decrease the pest pressures through that biodiversity is improving the quality of the crop, reducing the use of pesticides has actually been an, an eye-opening experience for me and something I certainly want to look further into.
Solar. Tras conocer los invernaderos a partir de las afamadas fotografías de satélite, Stutt se ha adentrado en varios invernaderos solares de Almería. Estas han sido sus impresiones. 